Para nasabi na ho yata na lahat ang dapat sabihin. Eh, no? Pero yung pangalawang testimony natin, sana ho pag ako nakapag-asawa, kasi productive niyo ako. No? <laughs> Nakapag-ipon na rin naman ng konti para... <laughs> De, hindi, pero sa totoo lang, kada dalaw ko po sa Bacolod, tuwa-tuwa ko, kagabi ho, dumating kami, galing sa airport ang Silay, tumuloy ng Bacolod City. Sa totoo lang, Manong Predi, parang hindi ko na nakilala yung Bacolod, parang ibang-iba na talaga eh. No? At uh, napakain niya kami sa masarap na restaurant, ang ngalan ay... Endings. Endings. No? Yan talaga, yung... Sa totoo lang po, yung lugar ang ngalan ay marketplace para ka nagpunta sa Bonifacio Global City. No? Na dati, parang pinakasikat sa atin ng araw yung Bob's. Yeah na parang panahon pa ng makapanahon pa ng magulang ni Manong Freddy Bobs na siya. Ngayon no, talagang ang lawak ng progreso ang inaabot dito sa Bacolod. At gusto ko lang po pagdiinan. No? Kaya nagpapasalamat sa akin si Manong Freddy. Ako naman po gusto magpasalamat kay Governor Marignon. Ito pong napakahusay na partner. Sa airport to, noong unang tinayo yung Silay Airport, sabi ko medyo magulo yata yung karsada papunta at paalis ng airport. Baka kailan natin lagyan. Sagot sa akin ni Manong Freddy, Okay na po yan, may pondo kami, ayos na namin yan. Ibang lugar ko kasi, maski may pondo sila, sa pag natanong ko ng ganun, sasabihin sa akin, o nga, wala kami pondo, bago sa inyo dagdagan. <laughs> no? Kaya, may partner ka tulad ni Manong Freddy, na talagang nagtutulungan kayo, eh talagang malayo ho nararating. Kaya kung pwede ko, palakpak natin si Manong Freddy. At uh, baka raw ho, ito last term na raw ho niya, pagkatapos po noon, eh, sasamahan na niya akong mag-ikot ng Pilipinas after, uh, sa 19, 2019. Okay. Anyway, the Philippines has undergone a dramatic turnaround. From 2010 to 2015, our growth average was at 6.2% for the GDP, the fastest pace since the 1970s, which we all know was a period of crony capitalism in the Philippines and therefore not comparable to the economic growth we have now. Now, wherever we look, we can witness proof of this trend. One only needs to open the Sunday newspaper to the classified ad section to see all the workers needed by companies in the Philippines. Might I add, these are not simply menial jobs. Companies are looking for skilled workers, and amongst them engineers, needed on an immediate hiring basis. Indeed, during our time in office, we are surprised at the revival of manufacturing, with more companies setting up shop. These include the production of complex items such as automobile, automobile parts and aircraft components, aortic catheters, smart electronic toothbrushes, and many other complicated technological equipment. The vibrancy can be seen here in Visayas as well. Yesterday, in Bacolod, I was surprised. Uh, I'm sorry, repeating myself. We ate at a restaurant called Entings in the marketplace, or in a venue called Marketplace. The venue, I was told, was less than a year old, the food, as always, was excellent, and there were so many people entertaining themselves and eating at this particular complex. I have been to Bacolod several times, but even as I, even I was surprised at the growth of business as demonstrated by these new entertainment venues. Even from the airport, one could hardly recognize the transformation of your province. At some point, certain portions made me feel like I was actually in the Bonifacio Global City. Last year, we inaugurated the Negros First Cyber Center. To put it, put it politely, it seemed as if they had acquired a dream location. Governor Marañon tells me that now the locators are saying they need a second building already. There are more establishments now, so much so that it has reached the point where the city is worried about not having enough workers to maintain their growth momentum. Initially, at the construction phases, but then down the line for putting in all of these workers in the establishments being established. I mention all of these because our progress hinges greatly on having enough energy. These days, electrical power is so essential to both our economy and to modern life. It facilitates commerce, helps us connect with our loved ones, and grants us the ability to maximize the number of hours in our days. Clearly, we recognize its immense value which is also why we have been hard at work to bring electricity to every corner of the Philippines, particularly through our CTO electrification program. Before we took office, every Filipino was told that all the barangays in the country had already been energized. Sometime in 2011, I was told that the definition then was that if any portion of a barangay was connected to the national grid, then they said 
that the entire barangay had already been energized. It turns out, however, during an inventory of Sitios in 2011, this was not the case. We found out that 32,441 Sitios remained without power. I am proud to announce that as of March this year, through the combined efforts of Secretary General Almendras, Ikot Petilla, and now Naidi Monsada, we have cleared that backlog. Thanks to the hard work of the men and women of the Department of Energy and the National Electrification Administration, there are still some remote situs that will be energized by means of renewable energy, given the impracticality of attaching them to the national grid. We target to complete those by the end of June this year. Of course, as our nation moves forward, the challenge is to have enough reasonably priced, dependable power supplies, balancing the goals of fulfilling the growth potential of our country, uptake, uplifting the lives of our countrymen, and protecting our environment. I am proud to say that through the able leadership in the Department of Energy, we have risen to this challenge. Over the course of our term, we have commissioned a total of 3,262 megawatts in installed capacity in 70 power plants. 38 of which, or better than 50%, are renewable. For Visayas specifically, we were able to increase the region's dependable capacity by more than 900 megawatts, from around 1,300 megawatts in 2010 to 2,228 megawatts at present. There is another 5,404 megawatts in the pipeline through 60 incoming committed projects, 42 of which are renewable. Indeed, one can really see our commitment to mitigating climate change, especially since the percentage of renewables in our energy mix has remained relatively high. At 33.9%, not to mention, while we are still exploring how to minimize prices and ease the burden of our people, the cost of energy has stayed at a reasonable level. The solar plant we are inaugurating today is certainly a step in the right direction. It is yet another reason for us to be optimistic and confident about the future. I am told that this plant will help avoid 72,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions per year. And this is apart from the basic benefits of such a project. While we have a current energy surplus in Visayas, it is imperative for us to react and prepare for future economic growth. And this plant offers an estimated additional 59 megawatts of capacity to the ever-growing Visayas region. I'm also told that since the Visayas and Luzon grids have already been interconnected, these grids can be improved and can easily source from each other should there be a shortage in supply. There is likewise a Boitis 68 megawatt run of the river power plant in Bukidnon, which is also expected to start commercial operations this year. Indeed, for your confidence in our people and our nation, your companies have my gratitude as well as that of the Filipino people. It is such a welcome development to see that solar is becoming more prevalent and affordable, and our administration's hope is that even more companies follow in your footsteps. This hope is reflected in how we have helped pave the way for you to invest here, in the form of competitive economic incentives. Investors in renewable energy uh, development receive a seven-year income tax holiday, 10-year duty-free importation of renewable energy, machinery, and feed-in tariff rates, amongst many others. Of course, Congressman Omali is here, Chair of the Energy Committee in the House. If there are other concerns, he is the person to talk to, to amend the necessary laws. <laughs> Through such measures, we are confident that with the growing number of believers from the private sector, we can truly achieve our goal of increasing our renewable energy base capacity to 15,304 megawatts by 2030. And I'm certain that as we welcome even more advances in renewables, we can minimize our reliance on fossil fuels, increase the share of renewables, all without jeopardizing the price structure. Ladies and gentlemen, I only have 72 days remaining in office, and I will certainly miss attending landmark inaugurations such as this one. Rest assured, however, that I am no less optimistic about our future as a nation, because we have reliable, well-meaning partners in you. And more importantly, because I am confident that our people will not let our gains go to waste and will choose to continue treading the straight path. I am hopeful that even as I step down, Aboitis can remain the consistent partner and continue its trend of working with government, investing in the Filipino, and helping shape a better future for mankind. 
And I'm likewise hopeful that our productive partnership can set an enduring framework by which sectors, public and private, converge to build a nation that we can be proud to bequeath to the next generation. Thank you. Good day.